Well, what would you think of Dylan? Yeah, you know, he's a great kid, first of all. First and foremost, he's a great kid. He's got great size, really good arm, really smart. Um, I've been really, really impressed with him this week. Um, I can't ask for a better guy. You gotta, can you get a good feel in this sort of, you know, you're not in shoulder pads, um, it's pretty limited. Do you feel like you got a pretty good feel for what you're going to see on Friday, tomorrow? Um, <laughs> it's hard. it's really hard to say because, you know, we're kind of trying to learn the plays, you know, in, in four days. And, you know, it's a real uh, watered-down book. But, um, you know, they've, they've come out here and they've, had, they've done a nice job. Uh, you know, I think we've got some terrific players. You know, look at the places these, these guys are going to, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Georgia, you know. Um, and they've done a really nice job. They've been very respectful, very much uh, learning. Um, so I think it's, I think it's pretty good. Coach, when's the last time you've coached high school players? Uh, first, this would be the first time. <laughs> so what? But, is... Yeah, my dad was a high school coach for 35 years, but um, I've never coached high school. What? Uh, how did you get involved? How did they reach out to you and coach? Uh, yeah, was... um, Steve Weish with the NFL Network, who I've known for a long time, called and asked if I'd be interested in doing this. And, uh, and they told me Marvin Lewis was going to do it. And we used to work together. And, and then when I saw that Joe Matapeco was being inducted, he played for both of us in, in Cincinnati. So it was just a, a natural thing. How would you say Dylan Riola's skill set translates just as you start to look at him big picture? I mean, what his arm talent, his ability, what do you see? I mean, you evaluated and were around a lot of great quarterbacks over your time in the NFL. Yeah, I think he's got the makings of, of being really good. You know, the, the biggest thing with him, he's obviously got the athletic ability, the talent, the arm strength, all those. But I think, you know, he's, he comes out here and he tells the other guys what routes are supposed to be running. You know, if a guy forgets, he knows everything that's going on. And I think that's going to be for him a huge advantage when he gets to Nebraska. And Carter Nelson is on your team too, eight-man player. How, how familiar were you with eight-man football? Um, yeah. I had um, Chad Chad Greenway uh, play for us uh, in Minnesota, and he was an eight-man football guy, um, and ended up being the, uh, he was the first-round draft pick. But um, you know, he's done a great job. I mean, he's all. He catches the ball well. He runs good routes. Um, the other thing I like about him, I think he's got some toughness to him because you know he got bumped into a couple times. And I heard him kind of, you know, say something to the guy. So, All right. Yeah. So I think you know I, I was impressed with him. When you look at him on on the hook, you know he's a good looking guy. Yeah, you're doing a lot of that. Looking at guys on the hook. Yeah. Are you? You're, do your competitive juices start flowing a little bit today, knowing there's a game tomorrow? Um, they will. They will, at, at, you know, closer to tomorrow. But, uh, you know, Marvin and I coached a spring game last year at Grambling. He was our one coach and I was the other. Oh, okay. So, uh, and I won, so I know he really wants to win this. <laughs> he wants to get you back. Okay, so you, now we got to ask you this, too. Now, keep in mind, Coach, I was I was working at the Lincoln Journal Star in 2000, early 2004. And I got a call from a security guard one time said, hey, you might want to know this. They're showing Mike Zimmer around the stadium. Do you remember that night, a blizzard night? I do. It was very cold. I didn't have a big jacket. Uh, but, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a great time. I, I got a chance to have lunch uh, at the athletic directors. Um, you know, we, they showed us all around the facility. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, you know, going and seeing all the, the Heisman trophies that you walk in. And I'm sure it's changed quite a bit now. But, um, you know, I thought it was a great place. The only bad thing was the plane when I took off to go back to Dallas, uh, the landing gear didn't come up. So we had to we had to stop in Omaha or someplace for quite a while. Is that right? Did you, did you how, I mean, how seriously did you consider Nebraska's head coaching job at that time? You know, really seriously. Um, I was, uh, you know, I had... Roderick Thomas, you know, played in Nebraska, him and Deion Sanders. You know, they were all telling me, you know, I should I should take that job. And um, and I almost did. You know, I got up real early the next morning and I thought I was gonna take it and Coach Parcells and, and Jerry Jones kinda of talked to me and you know said, Hey, you know, this is where you need to be and so on so You got up Monday morning thinking you might take that job. Whatever day it was. It was I, Monday I, morning. It was Monday morning, yeah. Okay, yeah. And Parcells came in and asked me uh, you know what I was gonna do and I said I haven't decided yet. And uh, so he came in and we sat down and talked. So that was clear. You were close to changing the course of your career by quite a bit. Yeah, exactly. And I love to hunt. And, you know, they've got all the cornfields. And, you know, I, I coached at the University of Missouri a long time ago. And, you know, seeing all the red in that stadium is unbelievable. You know, the fans there are outstanding. So, yeah, I was real close.
Well, hey, Coach, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, super nice of you. Thank you.